do workshops at transplant hospitals, uh, dialysis clinics, uh, organizations like the Memphis Kidney Foundation, uh, all over. I, I travel uh, nationally to do the to do the programs. So my goal is to introduce you of what I'm doing and give you a brief overview of liver donation. Not much. I'll spend most of my time on how you can communicate your need to your family members and friends. <coughs> Obviously, I'm not giving you any medical advice, uh, but we're lucky enough here to have someone that, uh, that possibly can. I can't encourage you to learn more and more and more enough. Okay? It's, it's a lot easier to talk about this when you have some more knowledge. I'm pretty comfortable talking about it, but if you were to ask me to describe the uh, new health care uh, law that was passed last year, uh, I would get a little uncomfortable, okay, because I just don't know. So learn as much as you can about the whole process. Here's a snapshot of 20 years to the waiting list. This shows what's happened over 20 years to the waiting list. This shows the number of transplants. And it shows, it's talking about all transplants, not only uh, kidney, but all organ transplants, but kidneys always make up about 85%. So you're seeing what's happened. And the number of living, uh, 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 number of transplants have stayed flat or gone down. And obviously the waiting list continues to, continues to go up. Uh, last year, uh, 16,000 uh, transplants, a little over, two thirds are deceased donor, one from living, uh, fewer living, and uh, number of deceased donors lower in three of the last four years. We kind of understand that. Cars have gotten safer, helmet laws are out there, uh, medical uh, community's gotten better in saving lives. Uh, so that's a little, you know, understandable uh, if, it does, if it were to go down. But really no one has a good explanation as to why there are fewer uh, living donors over, over the last few years. So it's a little bit confusing of why the numbers aren't better. Let's talk about that word matching, just to give you an idea of, it's often misused, not that that's important, but it'll give you a, a better picture of that whole process. And so I'd rather use the two terms, suitable and compatible. A suitable donor is someone that's healthy enough to donate. A compatible donor is able to donate to the person they want to Dr. Reese mentioned these antibodies or blood type incompatibility. Those are the two main reasons why people would be incompatible. So those words are probably better. PRA panel reactive antibodies is a test done, a blood test done on the recipient. It's done very early in the process. So if you're on the waiting list and you don't know your PRA, call your transplant coordinator and get it. They know what it is. Now to tell you how important it is. It measures the number of antibodies in your blood. And as Dr. Reese described, the mother can develop these antibodies uh, in your blood. There are three ways you develop blood transfusion, previous transplant or some women uh, giving birth. And what this means is PRAs are measured 0 to 99. And if your PRA is 25, basically what that means is 25% of the population will not be able to donate to you. You would reject that organ. Okay? So if you're an 80, you should know. If you're 0, you should know. So that's all. There are things that can be done. I won't get into it uh, today with a high uh, PRA, but you should know what that number is. This is probably the most important blood test that's done. When you have a potential donor, they will mix their blood. Okay? If the uh, uh, recipient has a reaction to that blood, it's called a positive cross match. You don't want a positive cross match. You want a negative cross match. So that has to do sometimes with the PRAs and some other issues. So again, another very important. I really call this the number one, I'm just on one of these days. The number one most important blood test, this is number two, in my mind, of what's going on. HLAs are those six antigens, that's where the term matching comes from. So when you hear of someone, hey, they were a perfect match, they probably mean they were compatible. It could mean they were a per perfect match, it's only about 5% of the time. Just so you know, it's not that important, but it's just some terminology. And the reason why this isn't as important as it once was is because of the immunosuppression drugs. They're not as concerned about the matching or these six antigens. And this will give you a little more info on that. So if you take a look at this, you see here they combine zero to five antigen in the same group to measure longevity, okay? And uh, because there's not a significant difference because of the, the drugs. Uh, 
perfect match, six out of six, definitely. Undeceased donation. Living donation, same thing, okay? Zero to five, perfect match. And these numbers, what we call the half-life, it's exactly the point when half of the kidneys have, have no longer function and half of them are still functioning. That's the term that they use. Okay, it's not a magic number, 17.8 years. It's over. Dr. Reese talked about the benefit of a living donor versus a deceased donor. It's pretty obvious here. But these two bars say it all. They really say it all. When I first saw this and figured it out, it was a wow moment for me. You have a deceased donor. Six antigen match. Perfect match. Perfect match. Doesn't happen very often. Their longevity isn't as long as a zero match of a living donor. So you're better having a living donor with a zero match than a perfect match to these donors. Really quite amazing uh, how that works. All right, don't be intimidated, intimidated by docs. They throw a lot of stuff at you, okay? You come with your questions, you get them answered. All of these acronyms, some of them we've even used today. I didn't know what ABO was when I started. Didn't know what it meant. Gotta have your ABO. Gotta have your ABO. Your ABO just means blood type. But I was ashamed to ask even what ABO was. So here are what all of they, they, they mean, but don't get stuck with BJN, because I know I did it. Okay? And then you go home, <laughs> and you don't know. Oh, well, Joe. I don't know what that was. Okay, so that's what you really have to watch out for for yourself. All right, let's talk about how you can communicate your needs to family members and friends. Here's the key. You don't ask. You tell your story. But you've got to be comfortable telling your story. And so in the workshops, we spend a lot of time on how you're going to do that. Advocates are great. Elevator speeches are great. We'll talk about that for a second. And you've got to meet people all the time. You've got to meet new people. Grocery store cashiers receive transplants from their customers. How many people do you think a grocery store cashier sees a day? And she's getting one of her customers to donate? It's a big pocket, and I get that. Starbucks baristas, okay? You gotta talk about it, okay? You've got to talk about what's going on, okay? Expand your network. Volunteer for the AAKP the National Kidney Foundation, or anything in your community. It'll, it'll, it'll help you. Your strategy. This is your Super Bowl. This is your Super Bowl. You gotta develop a strategy. You just can't go after it haphazardly. You've gotta sit down and say, how am I gonna do this? How can I go about the process? And so you've gotta develop, okay? You've gotta develop. Very important, very important. Anyone at the end of the day bump into somebody or they're in a situation and you think, what did I say to, to that person? I should have said whatever it is. We all have that. So if you're prepared to say it and tell people about your situation, you'll do it. You will do it. It's just like interviewing for a job. Same thing. Would you sit there if you're interviewing for a job and say, I want this job, I need this job, how do I get this job? Inappropriate. Okay? Inappropriate. Okay? They know what you want. Same thing with uh, transplants. You start talking to people. Yeah, they know what you want, but you don't have to ask. You don't have to say those words. Very big difference. Very big difference. I'm not being facetious here. Okay? All of these people you meet, you should be talking to them. All of them. There's really no, no reason. Here's a story about a seven-year-old boy was talking about his mom's need for a transplant. One of his teachers donated to his mom. Seven-year-old. What an advocate, huh? Advocates could be everywhere. Everywhere. All your friends, family members. You, you, you've got to be comfortable. Here's some talking points. This is me uh, six years ago. Someone says, hey, Tom, how are you? Yeah, I'm not feeling great. You know, I found out one of the problems is because I need a kidney transplant. I'm going to be on dialysis in the you know, next six months. So I'm pursuing living donation. A much better outcome with living donation than waiting five or more years for a deceased donor. How long does that take? Not long. I got the template. I got the information. I practiced it. It was easy for me. And you need to do the same thing. You need to develop your own talking points so it's a 
simple thing that you're saying. Because if it comes from here, people will hear it. If it comes from here or you're repeating other words, not, not as good. Not as good. All right, how do you educate other people? They want to help. One, one fella, he, he put a sign out in his front yard. He, he was involved in one of the <laughs> webinars, came to the workshop. He put a sign in his front yard. He gave me a call and said, what do you think of that idea? I think not many people would do it. Okay. He did it. By the end of the weekend, he had 250 people respond. CNN picked it up. The Weather Channel picked it up. And everything but people saw it. People called. People want to help. It's just a natural response for most people if they're given the opportunity and you need to give them that, that opportunity. You and your advocates, newspapers, TV, radio stations, it's stories all the time. So write out your story and contact them. Schools, churches, the union, lots of transplants with the union. You, you'd be very, very surprised. Email and the internet. And what, do, what, I, what I mean by is it for you is a couple of things, two. One is if you meet someone on the internet and they disappear in six months or three months and you've developed a, a relationship, it's heartbreaking. It, it, it is. You've got to be prepared for that. Also, many transplant hospitals, you're not very comfortable when they hear that you met over the internet. Okay? So those are the two challenges you'll have uh, with the internet. This uh, has all kinds of stuff for you to, to take a look at. Okay, uh, some letters that I help people write, and et cetera. And google.com slash alert, Yahoo does this also. If you sign up and put in keywords like kidney, transplant, living donation, they'll send you articles every day, successfully. I get them every day, I get 20 a day. Okay, there's a team living and kidney transplants done every day. So there are stories really wild. If you want to uh, sign up for my Facebook fan page, we have over 1,300 people now on the fan page. Uh, I, I blog, I use Twitter. I, I don't tell you where I'm going to dinner or a movie yet because it's all, all you know, kidney related. And matchingdonors.com is another online service. That's what they do is match.com. They pay the, reci the recipient gets charged for putting their resume up there. And then people you know, can go on there and look at it. Uh, again, transplant hospitals often are not happy about that, but they're doing transplants. And so uh, I feel an obligation to tell people uh, about it because it's your decision. Craigslist, lots of them. I've helped two people that put ads on, on Craigslist and got transplants. The Flood Sisters, three of them put an ad on almost two years ago and got their dad a transplant and they started a, a nonprofit organization. I do an outreach initiative where I speak to Rotary chambers and uh, trying to educate the general public of, about this because they're, just, they're not that knowledgeable. Talk about the signs. There are billboards on highways you know, that people buy you know, kidney or transplant. And it's pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. And get creative. I'm sure you can come up with ideas. I help people with flyers and, or letters, uh, et cetera. Again, advocates, very often, they are the source for someone who, who uh, gets someone a kidney transplant. Best advocate is someone who wanted to donate but is not treated by some health issue. And they can now go out to the world and say, Join me to transplant. I would love uh, to donate, but I'm unable. So if you get someone that wants to donate and you find out they're you know not treatable, they can't donate, mm -hmm. then ask them, hey, become an advocate for me. And and and, uh, and and educate the rest of the world about it. There are things you can do. And advocates can do different things. They can help administration, they can do recruiting. You only have a potential donor when someone wants to donate. You continue to reach out and find other people. The only time you have a donor is when they wheel you out of the recovery room. That, that's when you have a donor. Because there are times where people go into the hospital with their donor and it doesn't happen. Okay? Or two days before the donor out for whatever reason. So you have a donor, you have a potential donor until you have a transplant. 60% of the donors are women. I help a lot of these non-directed donors. I've helped 10 in the last year and a half totaling 25 kidney transplants. Talk a little bit about how one person helps more. Okay, I'm helping 12 people right now. Of the 10, nine are women and the 
12 people are helping now, 10 are now. So I don't know about this 60% number that, that they throw out. It's mostly women that I'm in touch with that are uh, donating. And who are the donors? They're, they're giving people. They're teachers. They're social workers. They're government employees. They're in the military. They're firemen and policemen. They're, they're giving people. They want to help. So you, know, you can keep that in mind. And church, great outlet for, for reaching people, any religious uh, organization. This is what I use in my workshop. You're at a party at a friend's house, and you see someone you know but haven't spoken to recently. You're probably unaware of their situation. How would your registration uh, know about your need for transfer? Okay, you talk with them. You talk with them. The first time I did this presentation, I was stumped. I was like, really nervous, very difficult, in front of a mirror, just that. And you need to practice, because it's gotta be, it's gotta be you. Can't be me, can't be my words. It's gotta be you. So I really can't encourage you uh, to practice enough. It really it is very, very important. Preparation, especially for that elevator speech, okay, when you bump into someone, because it's fleeting. If you don't grab that time, it's gone. Okay, that's, that's what that elevator speech is about. And I'm not gonna spend much time on this, but you'll get a copy of it. And basically it's prep. You gotta prepare, okay? And so what do you do? very quickly and very simply, okay? Now, the only thing you change on the top one, this is for a friend, and the only thing you change on the top one is I'm in need of a kidney transplant, and you don't ask for that. If you don't feel comfortable with that, then, if you do, then you go ask for that, okay? So, give them the big picture, you need a kidney transplant, why, or the benefit, what's going on here, okay? Then the evidence, five years, you know, the benefit may be twice as long, may last 20 years instead of 10, okay? And then you go back to the big picture. This can be done in a minute or two. Practice it, be ready, because this is really the crux of, of where you're gonna go. And there are a lot of ideas in terms of what you can do, but select one, okay? Don't say, okay, I'm doing all of this now. You're gonna write letters, do a campaign, get on the phone, you know, join this, join that. Just get comfortable with it. Because it's, again, it's, it's really gotta be you uh, in terms of the program. All right, take out your pens. You can write that down. It's a link on the website, www.lkgn.org slash AAKT. Okay, you'll find a lot of, uh, uh, th this presentation will be there. You'll find, uh, resource guide, it's 57, 58 pages now, articles and additional information you'll find there. there is, it's an evaluation form. I would appreciate it if you can fill it out. I'd like to learn more of even these short presentations, you know, what, what I can do better. But if you go to the bottom, that's where you'll see uh, all of these uh, uh, links to, to more, more things that are there. Again, sign up, I'll send you information about what I'm doing, and get togethers uh, you're all over the nation, so what I'm doing locally in Chicago is going to people's house. They invite people to come over that actually do an advocacy. And I come over and I do a presentation educating them, telling how the advocates can work. I can do it with you if you want. We would do it over the internet. I'd sit in my house, but you'd have a group in your house in front of a computer, and we'd talk and you'd see a, a different presentation than this. That's one of my get-togethers and webinars. And starfish. There's a story about a poet who wants to walk on the beach in the morning before he did his work. And one morning he's walking and he sees a young man either dancing or throwing something or whatever. And he said, what are you doing? He walks up to the young man and says, young man, what are you doing? And the man says, well, the, the sun is up and the sky is out. And I'm picking up starfish and throwing them back in the ocean.
other days. These are all links of people that set up on their website, on Facebook, that they need a transplant. Now I've got the page, it's two pages long. It's unbelievable what's happening out there. Uh, and the other social media uh, outlets that are there. It's huge, huge what's going on. <coughs> what happens when preparation meets opportunity? That, that, that really is, should be your motto. To get lucky, okay? To get lucky, only if you will, if you're prepared. If you're prepared to tell people, I promise you, you will get lucky. Okay, you've gotta get out there. That's all for, for, for my presentation today. Thanks for allowing me to come here and your uh, attendance.